Welcome to the Nurse Shark Academy Show, a Baxter Professional Services production. Welcome to the Nurse Shark Academy Show. I'm Tina Baxter, your host, and this is our guest, Sharon Banks-Tar. She is a Clarity Legal Nurse Consulting and a specialist and an expert in the long-term care and post-acute care regulatory industry. Welcome, Sharon. Hi, and welcome to the Nurse Shark Academy show. This is Tina Baxter. I'm your hostess, and I want to thank you for joining us for this very important episode. Today, we have Sharon Banks-Tar. She is a registered nurse with over 20 years serving in the U.S. Navy. She also is a legal nurse consultant and has a background in regulatory affairs. Welcome, Sharon, to the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. So tell us a little bit about your background. I am a, um, a nurse with 30 years plus experience and uh, retired from the Navy as a Navy nurse. So I have experience internationally and uh, working throughout the continental United States in that capacity. I, at one point, realized that nursing had expanded beyond just the traditional um, avenues of employment, being hospitals, nursing homes, those kinds of things. So I became very interested in the continuing care um, residential community, which is includes the nursing home, assisted living, adult day, developmental disability. In order to enter into that field or that area of specialization, I became a regulatory nurse. So in that capacity, going out into facilities and conducting surveys, routine surveys, complaint surveys, um, initial or opening surveys. And in so doing, um, around the 2021 timeframe, I realized that never events, which had been spoken about by CMS and uh, the Joint Commission since the late 1990s, had statistically not really changed in terms of the number and the kinds of uh, damages that occurred. And so I said, to myself, I think legal nurse consulting is where I want to be. And that's where I ended up. Okay, that's great. So tell us first, there's a lot to unpack there. So let's start here. Why did you become a nurse? What made you become a nurse? Again, I think when I was younger, um, probably like in middle school, There was an older woman who used to babysit when my grandparents were working, or at least monitor what I was doing, you know, so that I wasn't unattended. She, I later discovered, had a stroke. And she did that while I was alone with her at home. I didn't know exactly what to do. I did pick up the phone and call um, the emergency number at the time preceding 911. And at that time, I realized, wow, I, is there something that I could have done differently? Is there something I could have done to help her? And that really bothered me. And then I saw a couple, couple of other kinds of things where people almost drowning in pools and that sort of thing. So I said, I think I want to be a nurse. I want to help people so that if there was something that I could have done, I could help them to either be comfortable if everything that can be done is being done, or I would know what to do to reverse those kinds of um, negative outcomes. Sounds great. Very admirable. And I hope that lady survived. (laughs) Uh, So what made you have a career in the Navy? What was it like being a Navy nurse? I. was listening to John F. Kennedy. And one of the phrases that stayed with me was, ask not what you can do for your country, ask what, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. And 
I thought, well, I'm a nurse. Um, I think I need to serve my country in that capacity. And as a nurse, it doesn't matter where you are. Like I spent some time um, in tours overseas. I also spent some time on the hospital ship, United States hospital ship Comfort. But my whole idea about being a nurse was helping people. So it didn't matter where you were from or what side you were on. If you needed health care, then I wanted to be in that position to provide it. And we did a lot of um, volunteer and community service work in some of the communities where children had cleft palates or just some injuries, diseases, and conditions where if these people had health care, then the outcome would be different for them. So I really appreciated those opportunities to help people. What's, what was your favorite locale when you were in the Navy? What country did you like to visit? I guess I would have to say my favorite locale was the ship because on the hospital ship, when we were deployed, they, they, they aren't constantly um, in active movement. But I got to travel to several countries. And so I liked something about each country um, that I went to. And there were certain places that I liked. You know, I liked the historical things in England. I liked the things that I saw, catacombs and that sort of thing in France. Um, I liked... Uh, Victoria's Peak, you know, go just around the world traveling and actually being able to say, I've seen these things for myself. That sounds great. And, and I certainly know that um, there are a lot of nurses out there that like to travel and maybe, maybe for pleasure, but maybe for work. And this is one way that you can do that by serving your country. So I want to thank you for your service. Thank you. So you transitioned from being a Navy nurse and uh, working in the Navy to a regulatory nurse. And you sort of talked a, a little bit about how that happened, but what drew you to the field of regulatory nursing? Uh, again, I was hearing about more so than actually knowing anybody, but I was hearing about things that were happening to people in assisted living in nursing homes. And just from a nurse practice perspective, I would, I would often question myself as to why did these things happen and what was the backstory for, you know, you get to see something in the news. The newspaper says that this person wasn't fed or that they fell. And that's where they um, had a terrible experience or they were injured or died. And I just couldn't put the pieces together in terms of how can I go someplace where I'm supposed to get additional and supportive care and end up with these statistically significant injuries or harms. So what are some of the biggest barriers that you're seeing right now in particular, um, but you know, with the current environment that we're in for giving that good quality nursing care? I think it goes back to processes and procedures. Along the way, um, hospitals have been looked at from a business model perspective. Um, nurses have been rolled into the brick and mortar of a hospital's function. So if you're going to be in a bed or if you're going to be in a hospital, then that nursing cost is included in the cost of your bed looking at what the nurse does and how the nurse does what they do, for instance, um, has brought, COVID has especially brought to our attention that nurse remuneration is not equivalent to what nurses do. And there was a 1940 study by the De U.S. Department of Labor that brought that to light in the conclusion of their report, and this is in the 1940s, that the pay is not commiserate with what these people are doing or expected to do. 
it certainly has been something that I've experienced in the field of nursing that we've talked about and talked about ad nauseum and want to know how can we make a difference. I just read a study today that is showing that we're making a dent because more nurses are unionized. And I know a lot of uh, nurses that are in like work for the VA are part of the union and things like that. Um, were you ever in a union or any type of hospital that ha had a union? And if you were, how did that work? Um, I started out in Pittsburgh and yes, there were unions, but in general at that time, I was more focused on learning how to be a nurse than I was on whether or not uh, I was being paid for the work that I performed. Um, I did look more closely at the union as um, I matured in years of nursing practice. Mm -hmm. But I, I came to the conclusion just from leadership classes that I had taken over the years as I was advancing through the military um, rank structure that it's still basically an issue of processes and management. And management, not about good or bad or indifferent, but uh, several managers said it during uh, the height of COVID. Some people came in and talked to their staff and tried to see what the problems were. Some people sent emails or sent messages through like a chain of command kind of thing. So for me, the union piece and being actively involved in getting a voice different than your own to get your points heard uh, didn't really become front and center for me until maybe the last 10 years. I can certainly see that. I happen to be in a state that we don't have a lot of union activities. Uh, as far as nursing goes, there are some nurse unions in the state, uh, but most of them are not. And it's because we are an at-will state. And I, what I find is that when you're an at-will state, that means you can work or not work and you can choose to do so or not. And mm -hmm. I think that there are some nurses that are speaking out more and more uh, about the conditions in which we are working and how we can affect change. And so in speaking of change, you transitioned from being a regulatory nurse to being a legal nurse consultant. So how is that different? Can you explain that to our audience? The major difference is the law that um, is being used to make your decisions or draw conclusions. Administrative law looks at the general welfare of the community. And you have, you as the regulatory nurse, have the benefit of a set of regulations or various sets of regulations. So, you know, the Code of Federal Regulations and then each of the state um, sets of regulations that apply for that specific type of healthcare you match whether or not the care has been met or not met. And instead of talking about it from a failure to perspective, you talk about it from a uh, deficient practice identified as it relates to this specific regulation, administrative law. Legal nurse consultants look at the the four D's in terms of duty, dereliction of duty, direct cause, and um, direct injury. Was there an injury that was can be tracked back to something that wasn't done? The final product is still the same. Was deficient practice or was failure to from the duty of care or standard of care identified. So what made you want to transition from working for the government to owning your own business? Again, I just really, between 2011 and 2022, I wasn't seeing from the data 
either the state data or the um, CDC data, CMS data, JCO data, I wasn't seeing a significant change overall in the incidence of never events. And I thought, well, what can I do to possibly support a different approach to that in the facility setting, whatever facility that might be? Could you define for us what never events are? Well, according to CMS and JCO, uh, never events are um, conditions or injuries, something that happens to a patient, client, resident in the course of their care. That should not happen if that individual is following the standards of care for their specialty, in my case, nursing. So you're saying things like pressure ulcers and falls? Pressure ulcers, falls, elopement, um, sexual, physical, verbal, mental abuse. Um, there's a category that expands and contracts in terms of 28 to 75 different things that should not happen. The categories in and of themselves um, had been six up until last year and have been expanded to seven. And those seven categories are uh, surgical product or device, patient protection, care management, environment, criminal, and now radiological. So, and under each of those categories, then uh, comes the provider preventable conditions, uh, healthcare acquired conditions, and any other uh, preventable condition, which is determined by that record review, interview, observation process. I see, I see. And so uh, how long have you been in business for yourself? Two years. Two years. So do you have any advice for a nurse that's looking to start out her own business, his or her own business? I do. And one of those things is there are outstanding resources available to you. I would recommend taking advantage of those opportunities. Um, myself, for instance, the writing is the same but different. From a regulatory perspective, does this or does this not match or line up with the regulatory requirement? So are people receiving three meals a day and snacks? And if they're not, you identify what period of day they didn't. You're doing this observation and this kind of review often over a week period of time you know, seven day period of time or five day period of time. And you document the specific times and days that this or that activity did not occur. From a legal nurse consultant perspective, each attorney has their own um, work product idea that they want. And so it's not necessarily a standard that no matter what state you're in, what country you're in, this is how you're going to write it. The uh, deficiencies are, or the failure to statements are going to be written on the left side of the page, and your evidence that supports that is on the right-hand side of the page. No extras, no frills, just the data. Whereas I find with legal nurse consulting, there's a, chron there's a behind the scenes chronology perspective, and there's the expert witness perspective. And it adds another exciting dimension to that whole communicating to um, your client what it is that they need to get um, to get the cases won or settled. Um, it's it's nuanced difference, but if you don't learn about it, then you don't know about it. So I would say that it's important to take advantage of some of those resources that are out there. Great. Now, a little bit of a shift. What are your biggest goals for 2023? 
goal number one is to have work with clients so that I'm really helping people, helping clients, residents, uh, patients to not be harmed because of the duty of care not being met. And then the other piece of that is I still have this uh, desire to participate in reducing the statistical data that says never events are still occurring and they're still occurring uh, frequently enough that they're still on the, uh, the front uh, observation and review um, perspective of government and civil criminal um, activities. Thank you. All right. Well, this is about to wrap up our time together. But lastly, is there any way or how would you like uh, listeners to be able to contact you should they need your services as a legal nurse consultant or have questions about the regulatory process? My website is www.claritylegalnurseconsultingplc.com. Great, thank you. And today we've had a Sharon Banks Tar, regulatory nurse and legal nurse consultant with Clarity Legal Nurse Consulting here to talk with us today. Uh, she is running her own business and uh, spent over uh, 30 years in nursing and over 20 years in the US Navy. And so I wanna thank you, Sharon, for coming to uh, talk with us today. Please make sure that you take a look at what's happening in the show, show notes. And also, um, I just want to add that uh, uh, the Nurse Shark Academy, we are available to also assist you with uh, building and launching your own business. We are experts in nursing and experts in business. We'll see you again next time. Thank you. <music>